When you think Pixar, you think emotion, right? And I don't just mean joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger. You think of pure, unadulterated, cinematic emotion. Be it the life and death of Ellie in the first 10 minutes of Up, or the near combustion of our favorite hunks of plastic in Toy Story 3. Pixar is an animation studio that, when not forced by Disney to make sequels, always pushes the envelope in terms of what an animated family film can be. Each and every one of their films has some form of literary purpose, from Coco's faithful depiction of Latinx culture to Ratatouille's themes of the starving artist, Pixar always has something to say. Ironically enough though, the moment where Pixar is at its loudest is within one of its quietest scenes. <laughs> Monsters University is Pixar's single most underrated movie. While the plot itself is admittedly predictable, the overall film gives us something that we don't often get from animated family films. Despite starring some of the most iconic fictional creatures of all time, Monsters University is imbued with a strong sense of reality. It's seen within Mike Wazowski's undying loyalty to his goals, and it's seen within Sully's deep-rooted insecurities with being a Sullivan. These character arcs are crucial to carrying the themes in which a university setting produces, and the film plays with these themes all throughout, disguising it with quirky monster shenanigans. Starting with Mike, we see a lovable outcast scholar who will stop at absolutely nothing to accomplish his goals of becoming a scarer. After time and time again of being told he can't do something, he can't be a scarer, the scare games afford him the opportunity to flex his muscles. With his help, his team makes it all the way to the finals, with win after win. He's proving it to the naysayers that he can be more than what they see. Win after win, Mike is feeling like he could take on the world, so much so that he does in fact. He takes on the world! Until... Sully is the son of one of the most famous scarers of all time. His dad's name is heralded by many and known by almost everyone he meets. Due to his father's fame, that reputation is held against him at every single turn. He feels he has to live up to it. He's let the pressure build upon him for years. So much so that when he gets to college, he decides not to apply himself. It's easier to level everyone's expectations, never trying in the first place, than to have tried and failed. The insecurities that come with being a Sullivan are too much for Sully. He flies on the coattails of his father, a scarer, while being deeply anxious of what the world thinks of him. With this in mind, after being part of Mike's win streak, Sully is also feeling like he could take on the world. In fact, he does take on the world. Just as Mike feels as though he is scary, Sully believes he is worthy of the Sullivan name. Until Sully's insecurities get the best of him. He cheats. Everything that Mike believed he earned was given to him out of mercy. Everything Sully helped build comes crashing down in yet another fit of self-destruction. With this, in a final last-ditch effort to prove himself, Mike steps into the human world, with Sully right behind him. Once more, Mike faces the reality that he is, in fact, not scary. Once more, Sully faces reality when it hits him that he is scared himself. After somewhere around an hour and change of runtime featuring the scare games, chasing pigs, and heavy metal moms, the story of Monsters University comes back down to earth. The scene in which Sully finds Mike sitting at the lake is Pixar's greatest achievement. It's one of the most raw, goosebump-inducing, wonderfully paced, perfectly acted, emotionally mature scenes in Disney's entire catalog. As Mike faces his reflection, as Mike faces himself, an unscary monster, he utters the words, I wanted it more than anyone. I thought... I thought if I wanted it enough, I could show everybody that, that Mike Wazowski is something special. Despite these words coming from a googly-eyed green man voiced by Billy Crystal, these words are like daggers. Mike believed so surely, so truly, and so unwaveringly in himself that he genuinely believed this indifferent universe full of random chaos would grant him his wish. It would grant him his dream. He puts in more work than anyone else, so wouldn't you think he's earned it? Don't you think he deserves his wishes granted? His dreams fulfilled? Then as Sully tries to console Mike, Mike lashes out. Sully is everything Mike wishes he were. Scary. He lets out all his anger at the universe for making him Mike instead of making him Sully. Please don't do that. You do not know how I feel. Mike. You don't have to be good. Mike. You'll never know what it's like to fail because you were born a Sullivan. It's here where Sully's walls finally come crashing down. I'm the Sullivan who flunked every test. The one who was so afraid to let everyone down that I cheated and I lied. Sully sits down just like Mike did not a few seconds ago and faces his own reflection. He faces himself, a scared monster. Mike, I'll never know how you feel, but you're not the only failure here. I act scary, Mike, but most of the time, I'm terrified. His eyes widen. This lets the audience know that he's shocked at the words coming out of his mouth. How come you never told me that before? Because we weren't friends before. 
As Mike takes in this revelation, they sit together. They both look at their reflections, facing themselves. A pair of pure failures. Their collective failures have brought them together. It's after this scene that Sully and Mike realize that failing is okay. Trying so hard yet losing or guarding yourself so completely that you fail from the start is okay. In this revelation, the monsters of Sully and Mike are wholly human. As they plan their escape back to the monster world, they use their inherent knowledge and inherent scariness to fool the world together. In this way, their dreams change. As they return and are ultimately expelled, they accept a job that was previously believed to be below them. A job at the mailroom in Monsters Incorporated. Mike's arc is complete as he realizes his hard work can be vented into another angle, an angle that ultimately just so happens to lead back to his dream. Tully's arc is complete as he has humbled himself and become emotionally vulnerable in front of Mike, once again inadvertently achieving his dreams as a result, although this time for himself, not for the sake of others nor keeping appearances with the Sullivan name. Pretty deep stuff for a kid's film, I know. However, I think that message is the most complex, understanding, and realistic message that Disney has ever produced. You may never achieve your dreams, no matter how hard you try, but that doesn't mean you should ever give up. It's only when we give up, stop trying, that we truly fail. What's more, those dreams or the angle for which you approach those dreams eventually changes with you as you mature as a person. You have to work with what you've got. Thus, the college setting is perfect for the film. No one is more insecure of their ambitions, dreams, self-worth, personality, and place in this universe than an emotionally maturing college student. I should know. I am one.